What's up YouTube? Welcome to part two of how to design and code HTML emails. Um, I originally said it was going to be two parts, it's actually going to be three. I changed my mind. So part two, we're just going to set up our HTML document. I'm going to talk you through sort of how it works and the theory and how we're going to write the code. And then in the third part, we'll actually put in the HTML. So you, this is where we left off in the last one. This is our lovely design. It looks amazing. And we exported our images. We've hopefully hosted them somewhere. Um, and now we're going to jump into Sublime Text. So if you do not have Sublime Text, here it is here. I've left a link in the description for you to download it. Um, if you don't want to use Sublime Text, you can use Dreamweaver or you can use, I sometimes use Visual Studio Code or anything like that. Whatever your preferred one is, that's fine. I don't really like Dreamweaver. Um, it's, I had a couple of situations where it actually changed my code and messed up an email campaign for me. Um, got in a bit of trouble, so I don't use that anymore. Um, I find Sublime Text is just lovely. Um, and I really like the colours, um, completely up to you. So, I will also put a link to download this exact document below the video, so check down there, download the project file. Um, it's going to be called Email Starting Template, and this is what I would always start with. You'll never be expected to write all of this stuff yourself, so just take this and go from there. Um, so I'm going to just talk you through basically what all of this means, or some of it, because you don't need to know what all of it means. So. At the top we just have the doc type, so this this bit of text here just says that this is an HTML document, jobs are good and easy, right? So that's what we want. Um, and then the way the sort of real, the top hierarchy of this document is that there's a head, so the head starts here, and then in the head is where we put some, some styling stuff and some bug fixing and things like that, and we sort of determine the rules. And then underneath the head we have the body, and in the body is where we actually put the content of the email. So as well, we'll put our table structures and all of our text and images inside the body. So if we have a look at this head, right, you'll see that the word head is written inside two um, triangle brackets. Okay, so th this is called a tag. Um, and when it's written like this, this is a tag opening. And whenever you have a tag that opens, you put some content inside it, and then you close the tag afterwards. So have a look here, this is the title tag, so you can see it's written in the opening tag style, so it's just the two brackets with the word title inside. Then we have the email title, and then to close the tag, this is how you close any tag in HTML, you have a forward slash after the first bracket. So that just says this is where it opens, this is where it closes, and then we can move on to the next thing. So you always need to make sure that your tags are closed. Most problems that happen in emails I've seen tend to be because tags are left open somewhere. Um, I've done it a million times, everyone's done it, it's fine, um, and I'm going to show you sort of how to spot that in a moment. Um, so first things first, we would put our email title in here. So we may as well do it as we go down. So I'm just going to call this uh, Tom Beggett Design. That's just what I want my email to be called. You could get technical and you know call it I don't know Welcome to my newsletter or whatever, um, or you could just say Welcome or something. And it just means that when somebody opens it in um, in a browser, the title will appear here. Okay. Um, so no big deal but you should have a title so probably put your brand name in there um, these meta tags here you don't need to worry about these at all just leave these in here um, this is important stuff and then here we have style so the opening of our style tag now if you're familiar with HTML you'll probably be familiar with having a separate CSS sheet so CSS stands for cascading style sheet um, and it's where you you would write the style of your H1s, H2s, your paragraphs, your images. It's where you determine what things look like and how they behave. Um, in HTML email, we have to move that CSS into the HTML. So we can't have two separate sheets, we have to just have one. Um, so some of our styles are written up here. Um, and this sort of style section here isn't where you would it's not like a cascading style sheet. It's not where we say, okay, all of our H1s look like this, all of our H2s look like this. In email, this part of the style is usually for doing some fancy things and for fixing bugs and stuff. So if we have a look down and see what's going on inside our style tag, the first thing I have here is Google font import. Um, and we know we were using Lato, which is a Google font, so I've imported it here. So if you're gonna import a Google font, 
you just come to Google Fonts, find the font you're looking for, so I'm going to search for Leto, here it is, click the plus, and then it appears down here in the bottom right. You click this button to expand to see more, and if you hit customize first, um, this is where you pick which font weights you're bringing in. And I know we need regular, and we need bold, and I think that's it. Let's just check our design. This is regular, bold, regular, bold. But that's all we need for this one, so I'm just going to tick those two. And don't tick them all, because if you see it says load time fast, if I were to tick them all, can you see load time slow? So we want, to, we want the load time to obviously be as fast as possible. And then we come back to embed here. Come down, there's a standard embed, but we want to import. So we just select import, and you see it's already wrapped it within a style. We're putting ours as you remember inside our style here so we don't need to take the other style tag we just need to copy from the at to the semicolon comma we press command C to copy come back in here and you would just paste over this so you can see we're import importing fonts Google and it's later and we're bringing in font weight 400 which is the regular and 700 which is the bold um, and then we save, so it's always important to save your work all the time. Okay, so we've imported our font. Fantastic. And what's next? Um, if you had more fonts, by the way, you can just press return and import three or four fonts, that's fine. That's no big deal. Um, but something to know, we'll sort of go over this again in a moment, is that it doesn't always work. I mean, it will work in most cases, but things like um, Microsoft Outlook on a Windows computer just will not, like, hardly anything will work. It will just default to a regular font, but, you know, if somebody's using something else like Gmail, this would work, you know. Um, I think it would work in Gmail. But anyway, you'll see, you'll see. Anyway, moving on. Outlook link fix, Hotmail background fixes. These things are just, just leave them in there. These are things that me and my friends have worked out and added into emails over the years to stop things breaking. Um, so just leave all this stuff in here. Um, and then here, this is quite a nice, this is a, this is a fancy fix, I'd like to say. So, so when you look at links on an iPhone, they're always blue, bright blue with, a, with an underline. And sometimes you don't want it to be bright blue because your email isn't designed with any blues in it and it looks really ugly so here is where we can overwrite that so whatever you want them to appear like on an iPhone you can put the color in here um, so I've just put in that's our text color so I've just put that in there for now hotmail symbol fixes just leave that stuff in here button hover change um, so this is where we can have a rollover a little hover effect on our button so as we roll over it it's going to turn slightly brighter so this is just um, a slightly lighter version of the green that we have on our button um, this is just a nice little fancy element we're going to include and now the next section media screen max width 640 these are our media queries all of these media queries are basically our responsive rules so when we drop down onto sort of tablet and onto mobile devices these rules are going to kick in so anything with a class name of mobile full width will inherit these properties so the width will be a hundred percent and the height will be automatically adjusted um, anything that's tagged as logo um, will inherit 30 pixels of padding on the left and 30 on the right now if you remember in our design we set the, all of the padding to be 50 in most places so what that means is that when we get onto a mobile we're just going to shrink that down so we can use a bit more of the screen um, some people do 20 crazy people do 10 uh, I like 30 because it gives it a bit of room but we're still using quite a lot of the space um, again all this is up to you um, you can go through and change this as you see fit so you can see our H1 here um, we can change the font size so if we wanted our H1 to increase or decrease on mobile we can change that here and we're changing the padding so rather than being 50 at the sides and at the bottom it is 30 so it's going to drop down to 30 same with the H2s we're just tweaking like line heights and things like that um, same with the paragraph same with the call to action wrapper uh, same with the footer same with the number wrapper and same with the unsubscribe Okay, you can have as many of these as you want so as you go through in the next video and we're adding in our content you can call the classes whatever you want and if you had a new one and you wanted it to behave differently you can just 
copy one of these and then you would write in your new class here so you just write in whatever you call it there just make sure it's written exactly the same and you could give it padding left 100 don't do that but you know, that that's an example so that's our media queries so when screens are smaller than 640 pixels these rules will kick in and then that ends our style tag and then we have this meta line here you just leave that in you don't need to worry about that and then here we can see we've closed the head tag so if I click on this head tag here you can see it's underlined if I scroll up you should see its corresponding tag here underlined so you can see where it opens and where it closes and you can do that with any tags at all so if we get our style one we can click here and then we we must make sure that everything is closed so we can select this and we've got to find one with an underline there it is and we know that it's closed so it's a good practice to sort of get used to checking where you've opened stuff and where you've closed it and the corresponding things will underline so then well, we've got our header that's all done and then we have our body so this first line of text here this little bit of code um, is just sort of applying a gen general style to our whole email to the body of the email um, now anything we apply to a specific class below this will overwrite this but if we don't if we don't add any styles into anything so if we just made a table and put some text in it it would have all of these properties or we could then we can make a table add some text and then add some styles to those texts and they would override this so at the moment we're saying generically there's no padding there's no margin um, you can ignore this stuff the background color is this which we know um, is this gray background color so it's just going to default where are we going back here um, the font family is Leto you have to put it in um, these sort of quotation marks like this and then to separate the fonts we use a comma and then we write the fallback option so if Leto doesn't exist then it will display a generic sans serif um, or you could write okay if Leto doesn't exist I want it to be Arial and then if Arial doesn't exist I want it to be Vadana if Vadana doesn't exist I want it to be a sans serif okay but I just leave mine as Leto and then just whatever generic sans serif works on that machine is fine the font size 16 line height 24 and the color is our text color easy peasy so you just put your defaults in there I usually just put my paragraph styling in there um, and this is a fix for Microsoft Office so just leave that in there and here we have full email this is where our email content starts so you can see this writing in grey here where we've got the sort of open brackets the exclamation mark the two dashes and two forward slashes this is how you mark up your HTML document so this isn't actually this doesn't appear anywhere this is just a note to myself so I could say remember to change this if I wanted to you know this is how you can just sort of mark up where things are so you know where you're looking it's just helpful um, and what we do is we have two forward slashes to say this is the start of the full email and if you look down here I've put the two forward slashes after those words to indicate that this is the end of the full email um, so as we previously discussed um, it's going to be a table okay so our email is a table so this is the table opening so usually you would just have a table written like that but actually what we do is we put our cursor in here and then we're adding some extra styles to this table so we're just saying table be a hundred percent so the width is a hundred percent it has no borders it has no cell spacing and it has no cell padding so it's just a bog standard table which will fit a hundred percent of the width of the screen and then the table structure always goes like this there is a row and then inside the row so rows go horizontally um, so there's a row and then inside the row we have our left spacer cell now this would be this so this column here is our left spacer spell cell this is our right spacer cell and this is our email body basically so if we look back in here we have a left spacer cell here then we have our main content and then we have a right spacer cell so this row opens here and closes here inside the row we have 
a cell. So a cell in HTML is TD. TR is table row. TD. Why is it D? Why is it not C? I don't know. But that's a stable cell. So we have three cells. And we're saying the left one um, just has a background color. And we've just given it some properties here to say it's got a font size of zero and it has a zero width non-joiner. You don't really need to understand this. This is essentially just a space. Um, so there is a character in there, but it's invisible. If there was nothing in there, it might not display. So we just put something in there to sort of force it to display. And then the second cell along, we have it set to align center and we've given this a width of 600 and a background color of white. So that's this whole section here. It's just 600 pixels wide and it's forced to be in the center and you'll notice that we did not give the left spacer cell a particular height or width so it will just expand to fit and that's exactly the same on the right as well down there and then inside this main content cell so it's 600 wide it's got background color inside there then we have another table so we have a table and then inside the table body we are going to put a table row and then some cells and then a row and some cells, row and cells, row and cells, all the way down. That's how we're going to fill out our email content. So you'll see here, start of email content, put your email content here, end of email content. And then we know these two are both underlined, so we know they're connected. This is the tag opening, this is it closing, and this table opening and closing, this cell opening and closing, this cell opens and closes there. So that's just a little cell. So we've got one cell two cells, three cells, and they all fit within this row, which all fit within this table. And then the body of the HTML closes, and then the HTML itself closes. So hopefully that makes sense. <clears throat> You'll just kind of get the hang of it. If you've never done this before, you'll get the hang out of it, hang of it. But this structure works really well. I've tried and tested tons and tons over the years and I've worked with lots of very clever email designers and they've sort of handed me over bits and bobs um, <clears throat> and we know that this solution works. Here we go, this is a pop-up from Sublime Text asking you to buy it. You don't need to buy it, um, but if you want you can click purchase, I'm not going to. Sorry Sublime Text, maybe one day. Um, so I'm going to save it and then I can go to where my file is, where here it is, starting template, if I open it up here we go. So we've got our left spacer cell, our central cell, which is 600 pixels wide, where we wrote, put your email content in here, and our right spacer cell. So you can see that this just fits in the middle, and these two adjust depending on our screen size. So if I drag the screen in, you can see it's always in the middle. And there's our email content. So if we were to just come down here and change this, we can write whatever we want in here and there it is simple as that um, so all we're going to do in the next video we'll start adding rows and cells to our table styling those up and we're going to try and make it look like this and I promise you it's not that hard um, so any questions leave them in the comments I'll try and help you out but I think if you download that and save it and then duplicate it so you've always got the original one saved in case something goes wrong um, and just have a play around with it and see what happens you know so if you if for example we could make these spacer cells black if we wanted to black is six zeros save that come here and refresh jobs are good and now it's not very tall and that's only because we haven't put much content in here if we keep adding content it will push this down and these will expand as well um, but don't worry about that there will be lots of content by the end so let's just undo that so we get back to our nice gray that we've already chosen in our design and I think we're good to move on to the next section